Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about the aha moment when you realize that you were dealing with a narcissist. And this this is the biggest realization that you're going to have. And so many of us, we never knew, okay? We were in relationships. Maybe we were married to somebody. Maybe we had kids with somebody. We had toxic relationships. And we never realized we were dealing with a narcissist. And why is that? Because we were never educated on it. Nobody told us what a narcissist is, how a narcissist can't communicate. Narcissists can't communicate clearly. They're not transparent. This is why you can never resolve conflict with a narcissist. They won't see your side, okay? They, they have tunnel vision. They only see what they want to see and they won't acknowledge the truth. So you're not going to get anywhere with the narcissist, but you don't know that. When you're in the relationship, when you're in this toxic relationship, you just feel like, oh, okay, you know, that's how they deal with things. You know, they don't want to talk about it or they stonewall you and walk out in the middle of the conversation and say, I'm not dealing with this. And, and they disappear or they ghost you because they don't want to deal with the fact that you're putting their back up against the wall and they don't want to acknowledge any, they won't, they don't want to acknowledge anything. Okay. They want to do what they want to do. Narcissists want to do what they want to do. And if you don't comply with that or you give them a problem with that, then the narcissist is going to either walk out on you or they're going to try to intimidate you and get in your face and instill fear where you're afraid to speak up. A lot of narcissists are are going to try to, you know, uh, get in your face, go into a rage, and next time you're going to be afraid to say anything to them because you're going to try to keep the peace. If you're the kind of person that's a peacemaker type of person, maybe you have kids and you don't want your whole house to go upside down. So what do you do? You shut your mouth to try to keep the peace. See, here's the thing when you realize that you're dealing with a narcissist. The thing is, when you deal with a narcissist, you have to make a choice. You know, you have to say to yourself, you know, this person is not, you know, coming together with me. I either have to put up with it, shut up and put up with it, or I have to have the courage and guts to walk away from it. All right. And that takes a lot of strength, or you've got to be somebody who's really beaten down from the relationship and you've just had enough. Okay. Enough. But one of the things you have to realize is that you're not going to change that narcissist. As a matter of fact, I have a family member who's who's involved with a narcissist right now. He doesn't see what she is. He doesn't want to see what she is. And why? Because he doesn't want to change his life. In in order to see what she is means that he's got to change his life. He's got to get a divorce. He's got to move. He's got to deal with issues with visitation with his kids. So instead of seeing that, he would rather be stick his head under the rug and, and just be like, you know what? Oh, you know, I'll just deal with it. I'll just deal with it because I don't want to change my life. See, a lot of people, they stay with narcissists because they don't want to change their life. All right. Because it's scary to go out on your own, especially if you've been with somebody a while. A lot of times people have been with the narcissist a long time and they feel also, well, I've invested all this time with this person. Why should I let that all go? But you have to, you have to, I always say, you have to look at the pros and the cons of being in a relationship with that person and what your life would be like if you walked away, all right? But what you have to understand is this person is not going to change. Ding, ding, 99.9% of the time, they're not going to change. So the, the importance of this podcast is that when you realize that you're dealing with a narcissist, you're going to know how to handle these people, all right? And how do you handle dealing with a narcissist? You don't argue with the narcissist. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your energy. You, you gray rock them. You tell them yes, no. You show them no emotional reaction, okay? You respond, you don't react. And why is that? because you don't want that narcissist having control over you. It's going to upset you. It's going to cause you stress. It's going to give you anxiety. You deal with the narcissist in as minimally as you can. All right. If you can't walk away from that narcissist 
And, you know, it's funny because I had somebody get on one of our posts on social media and he's, he's, he was sitting there, you know, a, a typical troll that gets on the post and says, laugh out loud, laugh out loud. He's like, oh, well, there's only 5% of narcissists in the world. That is so untrue. It's not even funny. Okay. Maybe 5% that have been diagnosed, but let's get real. Narcissists will not get diagnosed because narcissists don't think there's anything wrong with them. Okay. So most narcissists that are walking around are not diagnosed. But if you know the signs of what a narcissist is, they have very little empathy. And remember, narcissism is on a spectrum. Okay. So no two narcissists are the same. This is where people get confused because they want to put narcissists all in one box and they're not, you know, it's like human being, each human being is different and complex. We each have lived our own life. We each have experienced different things. Like somebody will not know what I went through because they haven't walked in my shoes. They haven't dealt with the issues that I've had to deal with. For instance, I have children with autism and and the struggles with that or the struggles with with little or no support and, and dealing with a covert narcissist that doesn't, you know, is not there for their child and stuff like that. So somebody else cannot comment on your life because they have not lived your life. And don't let anybody, anybody put you down in that way, okay? When you deal with people like that, that are insulting, judgmental, critical, you just cut them right out. You don't even have to acknowledge them. The The biggest realization that you have to realize is that you don't have to defend yourself to these people. They're nothing. They're nothing. Okay. They don't validate you. If they're putting you down, it's because they're insecure themselves and they've got to put you down to make themselves feel better because somebody who's really happy with themselves doesn't have to put somebody else down. And you have to recognize that people that are hurtful, people that are cruel, people that try to insult you are people that are damaged. Okay. They're unhappy with themselves. And the only way they try to make themselves happy is to make you feel little so that they could feel superior to you. All right. Don't even give these people a space in your brain. They're not worth that, okay? And I'm telling you from experience, because I've had ex-narcissists try to do that to me, and I will not even acknowledge them. They are dead, R-I-P, not even worth one breath, one word out of my mouth, because they're nothing. They're nothing, because I know what they are. I'm educated on narcissism, so I could spot it. I could spot a toxic person. All I have to do is look in their background, and I know exactly what they are. All I have to do is look at their childhood, see how they were raised and what their views on and what their um, general nature is, their personality, the general nature, and I know what you are. I know exactly what you are and I know how to deal with you. And if you're toxic, guess what? I'm not going to deal with you because I'm not going to deal with toxic people that are going to be negative and bring negativity into my life, okay? Okay. Now, listen, you guys, and listen good, all right? Happiness is a choice, all right? And I've had to learn that on my own because I've had a lot of struggles. I've always had to be a fighter my own my whole life, all right? And I could sit here and I could cry and be upset about certain things that I've gone through in my life, but I choose to be happy and appreciate the better things in my life, all right? the better things in my life, the fact that I have food on the table, the fact that I have a roof over my head, the fact that I'm, I'm generally healthy and, and the, my loved ones are healthy and things like that. Little things that you need to appreciate, okay? And you're not going to let a toxic narc come in your life and make you feel like crap, okay? Because they're not worth it. So the thing is this, when you educate yourself. And I'm going to tell you again and again, you need to educate yourself on narcissism, whether it's through me or through somebody else who knows what they're talking about. Because once you educate yourself and you have that aha moment, you are, you're going to become so self-empowered. 
Believe me when I tell you, you're going to be so self-empowered. I can go anywhere and I could pretty much watch somebody. I've gotten to that point and I know right off what I'm dealing with. I know if I'm dealing with a covert narcissist. I know if I'm dealing with a malignant narcissist. I know if I'm dealing with um, a grandiose narcissist because I've studied it. All right. I've studied it. I've seen it all around me in my friends, my family, my exes. I, I know what it is and you become powerful. Once you know what you're dealing with, once you know what your target is, you know how to handle them, all right? But see, the problem is a lot of people didn't know this. They just felt like, okay, well, I'm dealing with a a difficult person. All right, they're a little difficult. You know, maybe if we go to marriage counseling or, or couples therapy, you know, we could work this out and everything like that. Well, if you're dealing with a narcissist, you're not going to get anywhere with that. Most of the time, you're not going to get anywhere with that because a narcissist doesn't want to go to couples therapy unless they're forced to go to couples therapy. And if they do go to couples therapy, guess what that narcissist is going to do? They're going to try to manipulate the therapist. They're going to kiss up to that therapist and try to make you look like the bad guy. They're going to play the victim, all right? A lot of times, this is one of the biggest tools narcissists use is playing the victim, okay? Oh, well, that's the way you want it. You know, oh, I would have told you, but I know how you would react, okay? I just had a, a, a gentleman on one of my posts say that on a post, you know, the, the woman he was dealing with was having an affair with this guy for six months and she tells him, oh, well, I would have told you, but I know how you would react. So you go out and have an affair? See, this is an excuse. This is an excuse for the narcissist to not be transparent with you. All right. There is no excuse for that. If you can't communicate and you can't be truthful, then you shouldn't be in a relationship with somebody and try to fool them into thinking that you're being transparent. And, and this is the thing, you guys, you got to study the signs of a narcissist. You've got to know they're going to flip the blame on you. You got to know that they won't apologize. Or if they do apologize, it's because they're after something else. You've got to know when they move fast in the relationship in the beginning because maybe they want to move into your crib or your place, all right? You've got to look at this person and and look at how they're living. I always say this. This is so true, you guys. Look at how somebody lives. It tells you everything about the person. For instance, some people are clean fanatics, all right? It's a control thing. So they may say something to their partner like, why'd you leave the cup in the sink or something like that? It's a control thing. Your place could be immaculate and you're living with a narcissist and they have control issues and they're going to sit there and they're going to pick on something. Why'd you park crooked in the driveway? Why didn't you go pick up the clothes at the laundromat? Why are you waiting? They're going to find something to always nitpick about. There is no peace when you live with a narcissist, all right? So understand this. When you're dealing with a narcissist, it's mass confusion, okay? And the other thing that I have to tell you when you're dealing with a narcissist is the problem most of the time, okay, if you're speaking the truth and you're, you're, you're keeping it to the facts and everything, if you're, if you're stating the facts and you're stating the truth and that person doesn't want to acknowledge it or that person, you know, gives you the silent routine or, or stonewalls you, you're dealing with a toxic person. Recognize it. You're dealing with a toxic person because a person that is, is a straight up person that believes in being honest and believes in being truthful will have no problem sitting down and talking to you if you talk to them in a respectful manner and you just talk about the facts, okay? But a narcissist, even if you bring up the truth to them, they don't want to hear it. They, it's their way and that's it, okay? And another way you're going to know you're dealing with a narcissist is they need plenty of attention. Narcissists are always trying to prove something. In other words, you let's say you go to a party or something. The narcissist is going to be bragging. They're going to be bragging to people, oh, you know, I met this person or I met that celebrity. The narcissist is going to be the one showing you pictures of them with a celebrity with a signed picture. That's because they're insecure. They want to associate themselves with, with famous people 
and stuff like that because they don't feel like they're anything and they're always trying to prove that there's something, all right? So you'll, you'll spot a narcissist because the narcissist is the one always trying to prove something, all right? They're always trying to prove that, you know, they're doing, they, you know, they're the ones that have to have like, like if their neighbor gets a new car, they've got to get a better car, okay? There's always a competition when you're dealing with a narcissist. They don't want, they can't handle feeling inferior, okay? So the point is education, knowledge, power, all of this makes you empowered as a person so that these people, these people don't mess with your head, all right? And until you're educated and you know what it is, and a lot of people don't know what it is, they could read about it and everything. It's like I tried to explain it to my daughter one time and she's like, Ma, I get it, I understand it, but I haven't lived it, so I can't really. And I said, it's true. Until you've really lived through it with a narcissistic person, you won't really know what it is until you've gone through it, okay? Until you've tried to talk to that person time and time and time again, and you got nowhere. If you're dealing with somebody and you're constantly trying to talk to them and you're getting nowhere and, and, and you know, you're being forthright with it and you're you're being respectful with it and you're speaking the facts, then you are dealing with a toxic person, point blank, period, okay? You are dealing with a toxic person. A toxic person also, when you sit down and talk to them and, and you confront them about something that they're doing that is wrong or you put up a boundary, the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna insult you. They're gonna flip it back on you and say, well, what about you? What are you doing? Or they're going to insult you, okay? They're gonna try to make you out to be crazy. You have mental issues. You're hypersensitive. They love to say you're hypersensitive, okay? That's a way to invalidate your feelings. If you are feeling a certain way, there is a reason you feel that way because that person or, or maybe your past has made you feel a certain way. And when somebody is loving and caring, they will reassure you and, and show you love, okay? But when somebody is toxic, they're just gonna insult you, judge you, criticize you, and put you down. That is not love. That is somebody that is toxic, okay? And doesn't wanna take accountability, so we all have that aha moment, you know, and, and the more you read, the more you watch, the more you educate, the stronger you will be. And one other thing you guys, I want to bring up as well. Um, it's like, I've had a few people on the post that are, that are really struggling, you know, they're like, oh, you know, it's been six months for me and I can't stop thinking about him. Or I've had another gentleman who said, oh, you know, uh, it, it still hurts. It's a year later and everything like that. It hurts because it's the realization that this person wasn't who you thought they were. It's the realization that you thought that you were going to have something with that person and it wasn't what you thought. See, here's the thing with narcissists. Narcissists can be a lot of fun, okay? Narcissists can make you laugh. Narcissists could give you great sex, all right? There's a lot of pluses that narcissists could give you and you're hanging on to those memories. You're hanging on to those memories instead of seeing the core of that person. Were those memories in the beginning? Because generally, you're gonna have those memories in the beginning because that's when the narcissist is the nicest and the most loving, okay? Remember, everybody's nice in the beginning and then the mask comes off usually after about three months, depending on the narcissist, and you're going to see that person for who they are. But you got to educate yourself. You got to know the red flags. And the minute that you see that toxicity, bye-bye, got to go, okay? Because if you stay in it and you try to change this person, forget it, all right? You're wasting your time and you're going to get more attached to this person. It's going to be harder to leave them later on, you guys. It's going to be harder to leave them later on. Like I had this guy, I had this troll on my post, all right? Real idiot, real idiot, all right? And he made a comment on YouTube. He said something to the effect of, oh, well, women love to be abused and they love that drama and that toxicity. That's why they stay with those type of narcissistic guys. 
No, they don't love being abused. Nobody loves being abused. They may have low self-esteem. They may not know the game. They may not know that they're played. They may think that the person they're with is, is, is truthful, but they don't like to be narcissistic abuse. They don't like drama and being hurt. So you, you are an idiot. So shut your mouth. Okay. That's what I got to say to him. All right. If somebody's putting up with that, it's because they have low self-esteem or they feel, or they have cognitive dissonance. All right. In other words, they have confusion in their mind because they're being told some one thing by the narcissist that they're dealing with and, and, and their actions are showing another. So they're not seeing the person for who they are. But it's not that they want drama and toxicity and be treated with narcissistic abuse. It's because they don't know, okay? And that's what we're that's what I'm here for, all right? To educate. Educate men and women cuz narcissism goes both ways, all right? It's not gender specific. All right. I had another idiot bring that up as well. Oh, another woman, you know, talking about a narcissistic ex. No idiot. All right. It's not about a woman talking about narcissistic ex because a lot of my posts are not just about romantic partners. It has a lot to do with other relationships that I've had in my life. It could be family. It could be friends. It could be people I had to deal with when my son was sick in the, in, in the hospitals. So you don't know what you're talking about. It's such ignorance. I tell you, but uh, whatever. Okay. People like that don't even deserve to be acknowledged. But what I'm telling you guys, all right, educate yourself, let others educate the, educate others. All right. And the more people that understand and know about narcissism, the more you kill the narcissist. All right. <laughs> the more you kill the narcissist, because more people will not give the narcissist their supply and their power. The minute they see those signs, they're going to be like, ah, later, goodbye. I don't deal with you, okay? I don't deal with you. You want to ghost me? Now, block, delete. You want to text me back a three, three days later? Now I tell you, don't ever do that again. And if you do it again, goodbye, get lost, okay? This is how you get rid of the zeros and the narcissistic people in your life. Your cutoff game's got to be fierce, your cutoff game's got to be fierce. And go back on my podcast, because I talked about this, about in dating and relationships, how your cutoff game's got to be fierce. Fierce. I'm sorry, you guys. I can't talk this morning. Got a little cold. But um, listen to me when I tell you about that. Because if it's not, you're going to waste years with the wrong person, have kids with that person, and then live a long road of rocky road with a narcissistic ex if you have kids. Trust me, I know, all right? So I'm speaking from experience and I'm trying to watch out for you so that, you know, you don't make these mistakes. So listen to what I'm telling you, all right? Educate, educate, educate. Knowledge is power. So I hope that helps you guys. If it did, hit the subscribe button and please share the podcast and have a great day. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Are you dealing with a toxic person or a narcissist and you don't know how to handle this person? Well, if you have a question and you want it answered, you can get a personalized video sent to you. The link is in the bio, wizio.com slash the underscore game exposed and ask a question and have a personalized video sent back to you answering your question. Whether you have a toxic person in your life, a narcissist, you're having a dating or relationship problem, get your question answered. Go to wizio, W-I-S-I-O dot com slash the underscore game exposed to ask a question. Links in the bio.
If you're having trouble in your relationship, or maybe you're dealing with somebody who's a narcissist and you're really confused, you don't know what to do, you need some advice or some clarity, well, I offer email and also phone coaching. Please go to the podcast description for the link on how to get email or phone coaching, or maybe you just have a question that you need answered. All questions will be answered confidentially. So go to the podcast description where it tells you how Yaz can answer your questions. Hi, you guys. I just want to make you aware that the Game Exposed podcast now has their merchandise available. You can check out the link in the podcast description. There's hoodies, there's sweatpants, there's t-shirts, there's cool hats. So go check it out. Link is in the podcast description. And follow Yaz on Instagram at dating underscore advice underscore Yaz.